Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few videos back, I looked at this, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and I ran various tests, and in one of those tests I showed that it runs cooler, it's got better thermal performance than the previous Raspberry Pi 3. This said, this thing still runs pretty warm at load, and so in this video I'm going to try out various cooling solutions, starting from adding a small heatsink, a small fan, and then moving up to something far more substantial. Right, here we are with the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, all connected up and running, but with no form of cooling fitted, with no heatsink, with no fan, so we can use this to take some baseline temperature measurements. And to do this, I'm going to use this script I've used many times before. This is a little bash script, which will clear the screen, will execute a little loop. Here through uh, seven iterations, I thought we'd get a bit more data, run it for a bit longer uh, in this video to get some really good, good results. And we're going to basically, inside this loop, we will take a temperature measurement, and then we'll use the sysbench command to uh, fully uh, stress out the Raspberry Pi processor by a factoring prime numbers up to a value of, of 20,000. Just to note, if you want to use this script, you'll have to install sysbench first using this command you'll see here on the screen. You'll have to execute this in the terminal so you can use sysbench. And then, anyway, at the end of this loop, you will then uh, have a final temperature measurement taken here, so we'll get eight temperature measurements with uh, seven sysbench tests between those. So let's bring up a, a terminal where I've got that all uh, set up to run, a nice big font so we can all see it. So let's just start off that test. And as you can see, it's uh, idling along at about 42.9 degrees. The ambient here is about 21 degrees. And we'll now fast forward through to the end of the test. And there we are, the test has completed. And as you can see, the pie settled at around 70 degrees C. And that is significant because the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus has got a clock speed of 1.4 GHz, but it drops back to 1.2 GHz around 70 degrees. It'll end throttle at somewhere over 80 degrees. But clearly, it's hit that 70 degree mark and dropped back its speed. And so what we'll do is we'll take this data and put it onto a table, which will build up across the video as we try out a range of cooling solutions. Right, the first cooling solution I'm going to try is this thing. This is a tiny little heatsink designed for something like a Raspberry Pi. You can buy these for about a pound, for about a dollar, and they attach using uh, some uh, just a thermal tape, as you can see on the back. So if I can get that off, hopefully we can uh, take off that and then just apply this to the Pi. And uh, there we are, that is on there. Nice and secure, we've got a little heat sink now on our Pi, so we'll connect it all up and rerun our tests. And uh, here we go. And there we are, the test has completed. And if we put those results across onto our table, we can see that applying the small heat sink did reduce the uh, idle temperature a little bit at the start, it uh, heated up a bit more slowly, but it still reached that point around 70 where the Pi was reducing its clock speed down to 1.2 gigahertz. But of course, this is only the start of our extreme cooling tests. Now, the next logical thing to do in our cooling venture is to add a fan. And so I've got this, which is a 30mm 5V fan. You can see it's actually labelled as a Pi fan. Again, these are very easy to get hold of all over Amazon and everywhere else online, costing sort of 4 or $5, typically 4 or £5 pounds sometimes for this type of fan. And to mount this, I'm going to uh, put it on a little board. You can see this little board is here. This is not the best piece of construction in the world, but you can see it's got the appropriate holes for the, the fan and the GPIO pins on the Pi and the uh, holes for screws to mount it on top of the little board I've made. This thing is made out of something called plastic card, which is easy to work. I've been uh, cutting it with good old uh, Stanley, my knife has been helping out. And uh, I've got here actually the bottom of the sheet but I bought this from, you can actually see that if you want to see exactly what it is. This is a 0.4 millimeter plastic card. So I'm going to take these, put them together and mount them on the Pi, and it'll look a bit like that. And you'll note here, I've got the power connected onto the Pi's GPIO pins. But to be very clear here, this, this has not got the fan connected to a GPIO output. It's connected to the five volt output from the Pi and to a, a ground rail and the 5 volt output does not pull power through the Pi's 
voltage regulator. It's basically a tap directly from the 5 volt input from the micro USB power supply. So never ever connect a fan to a GPIO output on a Pi or to a 3.3 volt pin on a Pi because that does go through the Pi's voltage regulator. You could cause all sorts of trouble basically. You could damage your Pi. So only ever connect a fan to the 5 volt output on the Pi and to the ground rail. Anyway, with everything now all connected up, it's now time to turn the Pi back on and to repeat our cooling tests. And uh, here we go. And there we are, it's finished. And that I think is a very good result. The 30 millimeter Pi fan has clearly dropped the temperature significantly, almost stabilizing around that sort of 53, 54 degrees. And if we put that across into the table, we can see really that makes a, a big difference all the way down from getting up to a, about 70 to about a mid 50s. But uh, I've not finished yet. I think we can do even better. Right, for my next trick, I thought I'd replace the 30 millimeter Pi fan with something much bigger, more powerful, and I'm going to use this. This is a Noctua fan. This is a Rolls Royce of fans, a Noctua fan. This is an NF-A4X20 5 volt version. Be very careful if you want to use one of these in the Pi, you can get a 12 volt version or a 5 volt version. You'd have to have the 5 volt version. And if we open this up, you'll see it's a ridiculous amount of packaging you get with these people, but uh, let's get inside the box and uh, take it out. There we are, all oh, very exciting, these are not sure fans. There's all the things here we don't need. We basically just need the fan here. And we're gonna have to do something about how it gets wired up anyway. I can't get it out. There we are, there's, there's the fan itself. This is a nice little fan. And there's all these mounts I won't be needing, but I will use um, is there a thing to, yes, there is a, an adapter here to go to bare wires to use on the Pi. So let's take a closer look at the, uh, at the fan. And uh, here it is. Very, very nice fans. These are not sure fans. I'm going to mount that on the Pi using uh, another little board I've made up. This is uh, obviously been slightly altered, so it'll accommodate uh, this fan here. Although I think it's actually going to fit on that way up there, unfortunately. It's not quite as nice, but that's the way the airflow is going to work. Just in case you're wondering, this costs about uh, 13 pounds, about $15. Yes, it's ridiculous to spend that much on a, on a fan for a Raspberry Pi, but I want to see if we can get the optimum Pi cooling. So let's take that and mount it on the Pi. And uh, here, by the magic of filmmaking, there we are. It's fitted on rather nicely. The wiring is uh, not too bad. I'm sure some of you would make the wiring more neat than that. You could potentially take off some of this wiring. But uh, overall, I think the Noctua fan fits very nicely on the Pi. It's nice to see a Pi with its uh, Noctua fan there. It looks rather, rather good. Anyway, I think it's now high time to get it all connected up. And uh, there we are. It's now the moment of truth to see whether it's worth all the effort. So I'll turn on the Pi. And... Uh, there we are. Oh yes, you can see there's a powerful fan is operating there. And uh, so if we now go back to our desktop, we can repeat our test. And that, my friends, is I think what we can call a very pleasing, a very good result. Clearly the Pi has stabilized with its Noctua cooler at 47.2 at full load. If we put that over onto the table, of course, we're going to see that's, that's the best result so far. Clearly, it's locked a great deal of temperature off the Pi. Are we going to stop there, though? No. I've still got a few more tricks to try. I really like this setup with a Noctua fan on top of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Plus. It's a very nice cooling setup here. But uh, even so, to move things forward, I need to take it all apart again, like this because I think the real constraint in the system right now is this tiny little heat sink. So I want to replace that with a bigger heat sink. So let's get rid of this heat sink, which hopefully will just pull off with its uh, thermal tape there. And I'm gonna fit a bigger heat sink, which is going to be this thing. You can find all sorts of uh, coolers online. This is a cooler which has got about a 40 millimeter base out of aluminium, an NB1 cooler it's labeled. And uh, if I can just get through the packaging, Shouldn't be too difficult to get it out. There we are, look. And this is a nice looking cooler, isn't it? I like the blue anodized aluminium there. And this we can fit onto the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. 
Now, the heatsink cannot be put just directly onto the system or the chip. It will just fit in there, as you can see. It just, just takes it in there. But uh, if I did fit it straight in like that, it would short out a lot of these components on the top of the pie. That's clearly not a good idea. So to make this work, what I'm going to do is use a piece of copper as a spacer. This is a piece of 3mm copper I bought for this type of purpose I've used on a pie previously in some successful cooling solutions. That will go on top of the system on a chip, something like that. And then the heatsink will go on top that and to make it all work to have good thermal connectivity and to hold it in place at least initially I'm going to use some of this which is some arctic silver thermal compound which at least will hold it together enough to see if the thing's going to work so I will get on with putting this together and repeat our cooling test and there we are and as I'm sure you'll agree a very impressive result for passive cooling but of course, what you all want to see now is the final part of this, where I put the Noctua fan on top of this large heatsink. So, here I am back again with the final cooling solution I'm going to show you in this video. And I don't need to explain what's going on here. You all know what's happened. I put the fan on top of the, the heatsink from before, which screws in very easily. I will admit that this design, this uh, tower, is not very well secured onto the pie. It's only hold on by the thermal compound at the moment. I haven't yet found a, a mount or sort of a mount to make this fit together, but it will, of course, work. So the critical thing is I'm going to turn the pie on. There we are. The fan has come to life and we'll run our final cooling test. And there we are, another very pleasing result. And if we put these numbers across onto the table, we can see that by moving from the small heatsink with a large fan to a large heatsink with a large fan, we've knocked, uh, what, 9 or 10 degrees almost off the, uh, the temperature of the pie. It's clearly stabilised around 38.6. I don't really understand that 37.6 result in there. I'm going to treat that as an outlier. But clearly, we proved that using the Noctua fan can stabilise the temperature of a pie pretty quickly, and it does it better using a large heatsink. So there we are, some, I think, interesting experiments. I think the rig with the uh, small heat sink with a large fan is the most practical to use, but it's also nice to take things to their extreme. As we've seen in this video, it's possible to substantially drop the at load temperature of a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus using either active or passive cooling, or indeed both. Now, of course, we could always go further. We could add some very large heat sinks like these old Zalman coolers. We could uh, put the pie in mineral oil. We could try water cooling. There are other solutions left. And so if I ever get bored and I want to make a video, I could always try some further Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus cooling experiments. But uh, now I think that is it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,